Hello everybody, it's Mara the Storyteller here again and in this little video we are actually going to be looking at how to tell a story. Now when you are telling a story the last thing you want is for people to be oh, bored. Nope, you don't want that at all. That is a terrible terrible feeling to have when you are telling a story but there is a simple way of fixing it. Choose a story that you love. Yep, that's it. Choose a story that you love or be passionate about the story. If you're making the story up on the spot, just be alive, feel it, want to tell it. Because if you're not interested in the story, you're not going to tell it in an interesting way. And people will see that and people will feel that and people will be bored. So how do we choose the story? Well, I suppose if you're going to be telling a story, say we're going to tell a story about home. Think about what that means to you. Maybe it's a memory story. So think about something that happened a long time ago, or maybe not that long ago, but maybe a little story, an experience that you had that really meant something to you. Maybe it's something that you felt very, very strongly. You went through a particular experience and you were very excited by it. Or maybe it was something that made you so, so happy and you can feel the joy even to this very day. Maybe it was something that made you quite nervous, quite anxious. Maybe it was something that filled you with fear. And yet, because you're here and because you're watching this, you got through it somehow. So think of an experience that you went through where you felt a lot of emotion. Sometimes those are the best stories that we can start telling because people want to hear everything. How did you get into that situation in the first place? What were the events that unfolded and led here and led there? And then suddenly, well, what happens? What happens in your story? How did you get through it? When you went through this great period of excitement, how did it end? Did you finish still feeling excited or had your emotions shifted? Think about that experience very, very clearly, carefully. And like in the first video, think about all the things that you can remember about that particular experience and put yourself at the very, very center of it. Now, when you're telling a story, a lot of things can often happen quite naturally, quite instinctively. It's as if we just know how to tell a story, but sometimes a little bit of help is required. And for me, there are three things things that I think about when I'm creating a story. When I want to tell a story, I have to think about this, my face, because your face is so important when you're telling a story. Imagine if you go to watch a film or listen to a storyteller and they're on the screen, the person is telling the story and uh, their face never really changes. So once upon a time, there was uh, a little monkey and the monkey lived in a forest. <gasps> You're bored already, aren't you? Yeah? Oh, so think about how the expressions you can use and change that will draw your audience in. So you could tell them, once upon a time, there was a little girl and she lived in a village with her grandmother. And one day she heard a terrible, terrible noise. It was loud. There was clanging and cluttering and banging and shaking and shouting. And she was terrified. And she ran to her grandmother. Granny, nyanya, shosho, ah, something is wrong, what's going on? Oh, you see that? Yeah, bring your expressions in. Let people see the emotion on your face. And when they see the emotion on your face, then they are also going to feel that emotion. Imagine all the times that you might have watched a film and just because of what you see happening on the screen, you really feel sad with the actors. Or if there's a great action scene, you get caught up in that moment. And sometimes you might even be able to imagine that you too could be a superhero. One day, if you try hard enough, you too can fly. And it's purely because of the expressions that you are seeing on the faces of the people in front of you. So maybe that's something that you can practice. Think about an emotion. If it's happiness, what does happy look like? Your eyes, your eyebrows, your smile. If you're scared, again, what does that look like? What if you're disgusted by something? Ugh, ugh, grimace, turn up your nose, play with your eyebrows. I can only lift one, I can't lift the other one, but maybe you can. So experiment, 
find a mirror and just play. Have a little bit of fun testing out the different facial expressions that you can make. The second thing that I think about is the use of my voice. When you're telling a story, again, even if you're changing your expressions, if your voice stays exactly the same, well, that's not fun either. It's too monotonous, it's far too boring, and you do not want to be a boring storyteller. And so, use your voice. Play around with the speed of it, because when you go faster, it makes people feel that they're caught up in action. There's something exciting about to happen. And then, if you slow it right down, and maybe if you change the way that you're speaking, it adds an element of danger or perhaps an element of ooh, mystery. Put in some different sound effects. If you're talking about water and you could talk about a, a river and the river was rushing, or maybe it was raining and it clattered, clattered, clattered. You could even hit your hands on your legs, make that loud, rainy, thundery sound. So play around with how you can use your voice. If you're taking on a different character, if you're telling a story about your grandmother or there was somebody else in the village or, or maybe there was the shopkeeper who lived across the street, play around with their voices too. You could say, and the shopkeeper would always speak with a particular voice. Maybe the shopkeeper had a very, very, very low voice. Or maybe a very, very high voice. So play around with it and have some fun when you tell it. Again, that's something that you can play around with when you're not even telling the story. Have fun. Chase it and experiment with your friends. Play around with the way that you can use your voice. Think about the volume. If you're loud, it makes things seem bigger. But if you're quiet, it makes people really, really want to listen very carefully. So sometimes if it's something important, you really don't need to make it loud to have an impact. Sometimes softly, softly is the best way. Now, the third thing and this wraps all of these things together, is the way we use whoosh, our physicality, our bodies. You see, sometimes not everybody is comfortable being a big storyteller, a powerful storyteller and playing around and standing up and using their arms. Sometimes the very best storytellers are actually quite still. But just because they're being still does not mean they are not using their bodies because they might be using their hands in a certain way. They might use their finger in a certain way. The way they stroke their chins might also mean something to the story. Whenever you use your body, be very, very clear about what you're doing. Be intentional. If you're just telling a story and you're using your hands and you're waving them around here and there, it can actually be a little bit distracting, don't you think? But if you stop and then suddenly you bring your arms when you're telling a part of the story, then people, oh, they get drawn into what you're saying. I'm in Kenya right now and the other day I saw an elephant standing at the side of the road. And if I wanted to tell somebody about that, I would say, yes, we we're driving along and then there was this huge elephant at the side of the road. So that's an appropriate place where I can use a big action, a big movement. So whenever you're thinking about telling a story or whenever you are performing your story, be aware of how you're using your body. Sometimes you can stand up, you can make yourself bigger, and sometimes you can shrink yourself very, very tiny and small. And that can be quite fun too. In fact, the more you can change, the more you can bring in different characters, the more that you can use your shoulders and you can bend over and you can become that little old lady who lives in a small, tiny house and she is full of magic. So use your expressions, your voice and your physicality and bring them all together. And when those things lock into place, then you have a good story and your audience will be eating out of the palm of your hand. So go, experiment, have fun, and I would love to see your stories. <laughs>